Hello, this is Smoke and Joe Gamer. This is episode three of Sega Timber. Today is a review of the Sega Genesis mini console, which has been on the market, I think, since 2019. So, is it still worth playing and still worth buying five, six years later? Well, let's take a look. So, first off, here's the nifty box it came in. And this is an authentic model that I bought at GameStop the day it came out. I had it pre-ordered and everything. And here is one of the three button controllers that it comes with. I think it's pretty close to the original. It works. It's fine. But I went ahead and got myself a handy dandy six button controller, the retro bit one, and it's blue and translucent. It's really cool. I like it. And so this actually comes with a power cable and an adapter for the power cable. It just uses an old style USB and uh, it comes with the HDMI cable that you need. So it's great, you know? My iPhone 15 Pro that I'm filming this on just came with a USB-C wire, no wall adapter. So you're telling me an $80 product includes that, but an $800 product doesn't, huh? How about that? Anywho. Yeah, I will not be using the three button controller, but you get two controllers with it and the wire is pretty long, which is great. So, you know, it can reach all the way over here across the room here. So I decided to do this video a little differently so you can just kind of see the setup that I'm working with. Um, might be a little hard to see the screen here, but I thought this would be more fun than using the capture card. So it has 42 games built in. So that's what you have here. The main screen is where I just have my 42 built in games. But then you see down here, I hacked the system. So I have other consoles here. I put some Japanese ROMs onto a separate folder here, and those are included with the system. So you're getting 42 games, but you're getting the English, European, and Japanese ROMs. And that's important for games like um, Contra Hardcore, which are damn near impossible to beat in the English ROM. So yeah, you can play the Japanese ROM that gives you three live, uh, three hit points per life and infinite continues. Wow, so you can play that. Okay. So then the system has been hacked, but I really just want to focus on the games that are built in. And then real quick, actually, here's just a folder of some other Genesis games that I was able to add and just run off of the built-in emulator. So just going to scroll through these real quick just so you can see. So the built-in games are fine, mostly, um, but if you want to do like ROM hacks and stuff like that, then you know, you're know you going to want to hack the system to add those, because those can be fun. And then any kind of like homebrew type games. So, alright. So 42 games built in. Now, uh, like I said, you have three different versions of each ROM. So if you switch to Japanese, as you can see, ready, which is to Mega Drive, but because I hacked the system, it's just showing the English ROMs anyways. But I just thought you'd want to see that, how it actually changes the whole background there. So you can switch languages anytime you want. If you go into German, then you get this, see? So I thought that was a really neat touch. So $80 gets you 42 games built in and two three button controllers. This controller I think I got for like $15. It's great. And you're going to want the six button controller if you want to attempt to play Eternal Champions, which I don't recommend. And uh, there's the Genesis version of Street Fighter 2, which is, is fun to play with this. So let's just talk about the built in games here now. I've tried all of them at some point. I'm not good at all of them. I don't like all of them, but I'm just going to load this up real quick. So you get a little explanation of each game. So if you can find this for $80 or less, yes, it's worth, still worth buying. I wouldn't pay $150 or $200 from those uh, morons on eBay. Don't do that. So it's worth the money without even hacking it, but it also is you know better to hack than some of the other mini consoles and i'll get into that soon but 
Here you go. Here's Alex's kid. Oh, <laughs> I'm dead already. I got hit by a car. Oh. <laughs> I got some money. Car. Ah, uh, don't try to punch a car. You'll die. Okay. So, <laughs> there you go. Now, what's great about this controller, though, is you can just hit this mode button right here. And then from there, you can save your states, you can load your states, you can reset the game, go to the main menu, it's fine. And then this game, this uh, console also has some really cool settings here. So I currently have it set for that. But what I could do if I wanted to, switch it back to the 4x3, add a CRT filter. Oh, and then... Yeah, and then you can do this really cool background or just black, whatever you want to do. I'm going to do that because that looks cool. So this is the original format. I'm just going to go right through the game here. So Alicia Dragoon, I didn't play for the first time until like a couple years ago, or actually probably on here. And this is a really neat game except for the fact... Except for the fact that I broke it. <laughs> Sorry. something wrong with the controller apparently. When did that happen? <sighs> Sorry. Let's try this game. Okay, here we go. Hey, that was weird. So let's see dragon not working right now. I don't know. Whoops. <laughs> And I've hacked it a bunch of times, and I've had to rehack it and reset it a few times as well. So, I guess I should have checked that, huh? Oh, well. But here you go. Here's Alder Beast. This game sucks. But, this is a Genesis port from the arcade that's almost as good as the original. You know? Like, Genesis did a good job with that. I talked about that in a previous video, how, you know, Sega wanted a system that could run accurate ports of their arcade games. Power up. All right, so yeah, and then you become the, the wolf, and then welcome to, welcome to your doom. That scared me when I was a kid. The guy at the game store told my mom, "Oh, he's ten. Oh, he'll love this game." And I was like, Mom, I don't like this game. It's scary. Yeah, these bosses have way too many hit points in this game, let me tell you. So, yeah, this game's an important part of Sega history, but it doesn't mean it's good. <laughs> I don't know why they have to put it on everything. And there is, like, a code you can put in to get more lives and stuff. Oh, ho, ho, ho. there we go. That, that's the first stage of this shitty game. Yeah. No. It's really weird. I wonder why that didn't work. Maybe it just doesn't like the six-button controller. I don't know. Yeah, no, it, it's like hitting buttons that I'm not hitting, and it's not letting me do anything. Weird. All right. So yes, hack the system at your own risk because things can go south, but it's not that hard to restore to factory settings if you want. And again, this is just focusing on the built-in games, mostly, to start with. Alright, so yeah, here's Beyond Oasis, one of my all-time favorite games. I was hoping to speedrun it at some point, but it's been a long time. No Yeah, you see, my save data has been erased multiple times from hacking, unhacking, rehacking. It's fine. So yeah, you can play this game 16 by 9 or 4 by 3 with or without a CRT filter. Genesis Mini does what Nintendo don't. It lets you play in 16 by 9. You know, you can't do that on Nintendo. Yeah, this game rocks.
And there was a prequel, prequel sequel, on Saturn called Legend of Oasis. I recommend that. That's a great game. As far as I can tell, the emulation is pretty good. So this isn't like those crappy at games consoles that came out. This is an officially licensed product, and it was done by M2 Engage, the same company that did the ROMs on the uh, Steam collection, and the, the emulation on there, you know? So, no, it's a very high quality system here. You know, it's an interesting collection of games. Doesn't have all of the, you know, mascot characters you'd expect. But, it's got some important first party titles, and they actually got Konami and Capcom to play ball, even if they didn't really send their best games over. And somehow they were able to get two Disney games on here. That must have been expensive, huh? So anyways, there you go, that's Beyond Oasis. Just gonna show some footage of each game so you can get an idea. So, this is a game that absolutely can be played with the three button controller, but as you can see, when you have the six button, you can just go straight into these different menus here. Otherwise, on a three button, you'd have to go to this first, and that's kind of a pain. But you still have to go in here to save. And you gotta hit B to confirm in this specific game. Okay, got it. But yeah, so the six button has functionality in some games that you wouldn't think it, it would, so. And then, oh, there we go. I Okay, so there's no save data, but there's my save state that I created at some point. Sure. But look, you can have up to four, and you can... Lock it so that you don't, yeah, you can, okay, hang on, I'll get it to work. And you gotta hit, sometimes you gotta hit A to confirm, yeah, but see, look, you can put a lock on it so you don't accidentally, here we go, okay. And it was called the story of Thor in other territories, so that's fine. Uh, yeah, Castlevania and Bloodlines I've covered before. So if you've watched my past videos, yeah, I've used the capture card before to just get footage from here. And I have talked about the console before, but I just thought it would be cool to revisit it and do just a, a longer, more in-depth review of the whole thing. But I'm curious if more ROMs are just not going to work for whatever reason. There you go, okay. Yeah, I remember playing a bunch of these games when I was a kid because, you know, we had the local video stores where you could rent a game for the weekend. Well, there you go, that's one way to do it. Aha! Oh boy! I'm honestly surprised that they got Disney to play ball. Yeah, and you can now get um, Aladdin... Jungle Book and Lion King in a separate collection. There's also the Disney Afternoon collection, which has DuckTales 1 and 2, Chippendale, Tailspin, Darkwing Duck. Yeah, but there are two Genesis Disney games on here. Ow. Oh, okay, you, you pick up apples and throw them. Oh, okay. Yeah, I played this before, I swear. <laughs> Oh, I ran out. Oh no. What do the stars do? Yeah, you have tries instead of lives. I guess that was a little more kid friendly, you know? They don't want kids thinking, oh, you died, you died. I don't know. No, no, this is a neat game. Alright, that's fine. But like I keep saying, it's worth the money for 80 bucks. The 42 built-in games are definitely worth playing. You don't even have to hack it, but, you know, you can see some really great games on here, but also, like, there are some glaring omissions, like, so it's great that Konami decided to play ball, and we get Castlevania Bloodlines, we get Contra Hardcore, these were Genesis exclusives, but what about Rocket Knight Adventures? I mean, now there's a new collection with those games on it, but even still, it's like, that would have been neat, and then, uh, in terms of Sega first-party titles, of course we don't get Sonic 3, Sonic & Knuckles, Sonic 3 and & Knuckles. 
There's also no way to do Sonic 2 and Knuckles, which is why I had to get a separate ROM for that. And um, you get Streets of Rage 2. Now, Streets of Rage 1 isn't very good, so that's not, you're not really missing much there. I thought 3 was okay. So there are some games that were included in the Genesis Mini 2 console. That has more games in it. It comes with a six button controller, but it's also a lot more expensive. You have to get it through Amazon Japan and it's a $20 shipping charge. So I didn't end up buying that one. And that also has a lot of crappy games on it. But if you want to play Ristar, you got to hack your console or get the Genesis Mini 2 console. You know, you get Todrama Neural 1, but you don't get Panic on Funkatron, which is, again, that's in Genesis Mini 2. Vector Man 2 was on that one. Virtual Fighter 2, this is the Genesis port. It's awful. Why bother? You know? And then, yeah, here's your other uh, Disney game. I'm going to load that up. This was a two player game. You could be Mickey and Donald. But I do recall getting stuck on a level once because I only had one person and maybe I just went the wrong way. Yeah. This is the one that I remember playing. I, I rented it and I, I think I beat it. Yeah, see, look, and then he's got... Yeah, that's better. Yeah, this is the one I remember playing a lot. I, I love this freaking game. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah, look, and then... He doesn't... So, look, he doesn't have lives, he has tries. And he doesn't kill any enemies, he just turns them into flowers. <laughs> now, this is a really neat game. Even as an adult, these games are still, like, totally fun and worth playing. Oh, I see. You hit down and jump, and then he crawls. Got it. And then you jump on things, and you get thrown up in the air. You get extra hit points, I guess? I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's a neat game. Oh, and I created a save state before. Okay. Yeah, so, Comic Zone, I mean, yeah, it was a big deal when it came out. This game's hard as fuck, though. There you go. <laughs> Hang on. So you've seen what it, you know, would have looked like if you had a Genesis as a kid, or if you tried playing a real Genesis. Personally, I don't really want to play any consoles that don't have an HDMI port because I don't want to buy an old CRT TV and I don't want to deal with adapters. That's what I like most about the mini consoles. It's just HDMI. You just plug it right in. Now some people may complain that there's some added input lag or a little bit of sound delay. Yeah, it's not game breaking though. You know. And this TV has, you know, variable refresh rate and FreeSync Premium, 120 hertz, and all that, so everything's very smooth on here, even if there's a little added lag. Yeah, Contra Hardcore, Castlevania Bloodlines, these are both great games. Um, I think both are easier if you play the Japanese ROMs. Now this, Darius, this is interesting because, yeah, this was not originally a Genesis game. This was ported from arcades specifically for this console. And then they also included the Genesis version of Tetris because it's a very rare game. Yeah. So this is a great shoot 'em up, except that I'm really bad at it. Although I could definitely recommend Darius Gaiden for the Saturn. I believe I covered that last year. So yeah, do check out Sega Temper 2023 if you get a chance, because there's stuff that I, you know, covered there that I'm not gonna cover again this month. Yeah, I thought I could get one. Oh, well. Yeah, so if you hold B and C at the same time, then you just kind of do both. Yeah, so this is a very difficult game. Um, you have no continues, as far as I can tell. I don't think I've ever even beaten the first level, to be honest with you. Yeah, they trick you. They make it seem like you'd be able to take out all of those ships as they're flying towards you, and you kind of can't. Yeah.
Yeah, so I want to say, what, Super Nintendo got the R-Type games, but then Genesis got... Well, no, you know what, Saturn got the Darius game, but then I think PS1 did too. Yeah. But that's just it. I don't think that Sega consoles ever got Raiden or R-Type. I think only Darius. And then, yeah, same thing with Gradius. I think most of the Gradius games were only on Nintendo consoles or Sony. So, that's my name. They were saying to put in your initials. It's like, no, I'll just put in my full name. It's only three letters. All right. So there you go. Darius Gaiden. I'm terrible at it, but I could get better if I really sat down and tried. And then Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine in Japanese, it's just Puyo Puyo, which is fine. Dynamite Heady is a classic. I played this a lot as a kid. Um, I still remember the stage select code as well. So that's the other thing. Uh, entering codes is easier than in, in emulators when you're trying to use like an Xbox controller. <laughs> so... C A left right B gives you the stage select. Yep, that's the code C A left right B. Well, that's okay. I'm just gonna start from the beginning anyways. This is a tough game though because the only way to get continues is when you kill certain bosses, they start squirting out these little squares. And you grab as many as you can. If you grab enough, then you'll hear the voice say, You got another try! Yeah. So, yeah, that of my heady. Great game. Yeah. This is a really quirky game, but, I mean, we keep talking about online how there's a, you know... Companies used to take risks, they used to put out these really weird games, and they just don't do that anymore. Game development has gotten so expensive that they don't want to take any chances with something that might not sell. That's why all we get now is, you know, we get a Call of Duty game every year, we get Assassin's Creed over and over again. You got a secret bonus point. So yeah, if you just keep mashing the button and keep hitting that guy, you kill him and you get secret bonus points. So I've never beaten this game. I can't beat the final boss. But there's a final, final boss if you do all the bonus stages and remember the code that you gotta put in at the end. Yeah, I love this game as a kid. I mean, I still love it now, it's great. But, there you go. Look at him, his name is Trouble Bruin. I always thought he was a cat, but I'm told that he's actually a bear. I don't know. Looks like a cat to me. Who? Who? Then you gotta try to avoid the uh, blue shit. There. You only got two hit points though. So there you go, that's the first level. Yeah, I remember putting this game on my Christmas list after I saw an ad for it in a magazine. It just looked really cool. I remember telling somebody about it, like one of my cousins, I was like, yeah, it's this game where you like shoot your head off to hit people. He's like, well, that sounds really violent and gross. I was like, oh no, it's it's all cartoons. He gets different types of heads. They were like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, seriously, try describing this game to someone who's never seen it, never played it before. They'd think you're nuts. Oh yeah, there you go. So I'm not gonna play every game because actually that's just gonna take too long. Yeah, so this is the uh, Golden Axe port for Genesis, pretty close to the arcade as far as I can tell. 
Genesis Mini 2 console got Golden X 2, but not 3. Although there's been so many Sega collections over the years, I mean, you can pretty much get any game you want. Um, and then they throw an Earthworm Jim. That's a third-party game. This was also released on Super Nintendo, but I played this a lot as a kid. I liked it. Groovy! Yeah. I was a weird kid, and I was, you know, naturally just interested in weird games. But I played this a lot as a kid, and I don't, I never beat it because it's freaking hard. But you just have to wonder how many of these games were actually designed for children. Most of them weren't. <laughs> but see, we liked the Genesis when I was a kid because it was, uh, it was edgy. You know, it was for the older kids. It wasn't. For babies, you know. You gotta launch the cow. You just gotta. Yeah. Yeah. So he's actually whipping his own body when you hit that button. And it, I think it does more damage than the gun anyways. So here's where this game gets to be a pain in the ass when you're trying to latch onto a specific object. Or maybe I'm supposed to, oh, never mind. We'll see if I can pull this off. There's a uh, shortcut. So this you gotta actually just jump onto, but then if you time it just right, there we go. See? There we go. I got it to work like two tries. How about that? Still got it. Oh god, you stupid dog. Ow. Hot doggy. And you get these like super shots that you want to try to save. So look. Look, it's a toilet. Gee, I wonder what I do here. Oh, jeez. Yep. He flushes himself down the toilet and gets to this like secret area. Plasma. <laughs> this game's wild. Oh, I was supposed to use my whip to get across. Whip it good. Ow. Ah, geez. See, the thing with these games is 90% of my deaths are platforming, not combat. You know? <laughs> I'm always just plummeting to my death because I didn't hit the button. I don't think there's any input lag here. It seems fine to me. Maybe like, you know, a couple milliseconds. Not enough to cause an issue. Oh, I can just go over here. Okay. Hey, I need this extra life. <laughs> Weird doggy! Oh, this thing has, like, way too much health. I don't remember when he's actually vulnerable to attack. Oh. Yeah, that mid-boss is a pain in the ass if you don't have plasma. Of course, the crows want to eat him because he's a worm. Where does this go? Alright. So there you go, this is Earthworm Jim. Never got very far into this game. Yeah. I just, this level is like hilarious because it plays this very evil sounding like classical music. And then you've got that cat dancing in the background. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, you've got this recognizable classical piece. And then the music changes into something happier. But th yeah, you're basically in hell and there's the dancing cat devil. Yeah. <laughs> Such a weird ass game. Alright, um... Here's a fighting game you might not be familiar with. If you are, then 
I feel sorry for you. So this is a six button fighting game, but really hard to play. There was a sequel for the Sega CD that had better graphics, better fatalities and stuff. So it's, it's hard to say like who they were trying to copy here. Like, was it Mortal Kombat? Was it Street Fighter? Maybe a little bit of both. Yeah, some really interesting characters here. Let's see if I can uh, even win a single round. Yeah, this was impressive at the time. Okay, yeah, you got six attack buttons. I don't know how to do a throw. Yeah, the game cheats because fighting games cheat, that's what they do. So for a game that just went straight to console, you wouldn't expect it to be as difficult as a freaking arcade game, but here we are. I don't know how to do any moves. Neither wins draw. Okay. Yeah, this game is awful. It's terrible. It's terrible. Eternal Champions. I mean, so she doesn't have a Hadouken. She doesn't have a Sonic Boom. Like, how do you freaking play this game? No chip damage, so he can just sit there blocking all day. <laughs> Mash some buttons and... Oh yeah, see, now she's doing moves. I don't know how she's doing any of them. What is she, like a ballerina? Oh. Okay. How the fuck do you do that? <laughs> I win. Yeah. So this game has like these stage fatalities where on certain levels you gotta hit them into a certain spot when they die and then thing, cool things can happen at that point. Okay. Okay, so you do a lot of these moves just by pressing down with whatever... Oh, okay. I've been looking at this all wrong, huh? Okay. With her, you just have to crouch down and hit the right button, and then she does different moves. Okay. Yeah. So, this game sucks. <laughs> Play at your own risk. Don't buy a six-button controller just for that game, let me tell you. I don't want to do that. But then you get this, um... You know, this version of Street Fighter Two. I thought was pretty good. I played it a lot as a kid. Because Genesis got the Champion Edition, but then SNES got the Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Fighting, which was slightly newer. But they're basically the same game. Now, fortunately on console, you can make things go faster if you want. <laughs> and then you can see they have the alternate color palettes. Except for on Bison, apparently. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't do this in the arcade version, could you? And of course, the console versions are typically easier than the arcade because they're not trying to steal your quarters. But as I was discussing in my Golden Axe video, you know, this is one of those Genesis ports that's not bad, you know? It's obviously not as good as the arcade, but they did, they did the best they could and it's not terrible. I don't know why they got like the black bars at the top and bottom, but I don't know. 
That's all I can say. When I was a kid, I had a Genesis. I had a six-button controller. I was pretty happy. I played Mortal Kombat 2 and Street Fighter 2 on here, and they were fun as hell. You know, the three-button controller was kind of limiting, but better than the uh, NES. Because, you know, the Genesis was there to compete with the NES. It came out, you know, several years before the Super Nintendo did, so... It's so easy to say, oh, well, you know, the Genesis had worse graphics than Super Nintendo. Well, of course it did. You know, the TurboGrafx-16, or PC Engine, if you will, and the Genesis or Mega Drive, those were trying to compete with the NES. They couldn't capture the same level of market share, but, I mean, they had better graphics. So... I don't know what difficulty this is on either, though. This is probably on, like, the easiest difficulty right now. Yeah, and initially he only had the head stomp. He didn't have the, uh... I don't think he had the extra move after in this game. Either that or I'm not hitting it fast enough because <laughs> the speed is too high. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's not doing the uh, follow-up on that. Okay. Maybe he doesn't do that in this game. No. There you go. So yeah, unfortunately they couldn't get Konami to cough up uh, Rocket Knight Adventures. That would have been nice. You get Road Rash 2, which is better than 1. Um, I thought 3 was pretty good. You get Shining Force 1. That's it, not 2. And then 3 was on Saturn, of course. Um, you get Fantasy Star 4, not 1, 2, or 3. Okay. So it's a good collection here, but... You know, some glaring omissions, obviously, but, the, you know, the goal wasn't to give you 50, 60 games. The goal was to just do twice as many as the SNES mini console. But, yeah, so what did Capcom contribute to this? You get um, Ghouls and Ghosts, which I think is much better than Ghosts and Goblins on the NES in the arcade. And then I think Super Nintendo got, what, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, maybe? And then you get Mega Man The Wily Wars, so that's the first three Mega Man games ported to Genesis. I guess that's okay. You know? And then Strider is just bad. I just don't like that game. And then, yeah, let's, let's, <laughs> let me show you how bad this is, right? I don't know why this is even on here, but... Virtual Fighter 2 on Saturn? Great game. On Genesis, they tried to convert it into this weird 2D fighting game. See, this is so bad. And it's only three attack buttons as well. Oh, no, not even. It's, it's a block button, punch, and kick. That's it. The easiest way to win is just keep mashing the button and push them over the edge. That's how you win. Ready? Yeah, I played this in the arcade, I mean, you know, the the real version, so... Yeah, you know, I don't know why this is on here. We should have gotten Ristar instead. So, I mean, Vector Man's a great game. Yeah, now here you get also the Genesis version of Tetris, which is incredibly rare. It's Tetris, I mean, what what's there not to like, you know? It's weird. But it's just as good as the NES version and the Game Boy version, right? Better than Game Boy, sure. I mean, any version of Tetris is great. Like how, you know, how intricate does it really need to be? It's like the ultimate puzzle game. Yeah, the thing with Tetris is that the simplicity really worked in its favor, and it's very addictive. I really like that Tetra, uh, Tetris movie on Apple TV. I 
And I just love the sound of the Genesis sound card. I don't know. Maybe it's just nostalgia, but I love it. Yeah, and then the backgrounds change, and some of them are weird. When I was a kid, we had some version of Tetris on our computer, and it was pretty neat. I was freaking out because I'm getting too close to the top. Yeah. It's like, what are you doing, you asshole? Yeah, so the music goes back to normal when it doesn't think you're going to die. Yeah, see, I'm not even really good at Tetris. It's just, I enjoy it. I mean, what's there not to like, but... Just, you never get the piece you need right when you need it, you know? That was a mistake. Yeah, look, I get this uh, iguana-looking guy. That's pretty neat, huh? It's faster and faster and faster. I could play this all day, seriously. And sure, there's arguments to be made if the NES version is better, if the PC version is better. But, I mean, it's Tetris. Every version is good. <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna die. They're screwing me. They're screwing me so hard right now. Holy crap. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I wonder if there's a parallel universe where I'm actually good at Tetris. Oh, god damn it. Yeah, look, this is what I want to get to. It's, it's like a bunch of monks hanging around Stonehenge. Like, the fuck is that? Yeah, now they just go straight down, and, and good luck getting them to go anywhere. Oh. Yeah, and then suddenly they're just like, okay, yeah, we're going to slow it down. Let's go easy on the poor guy. Wow, you're giving me the worst pieces imaginable. What are you doing to me, you stupid game? Why do you keep giving me that one? Why? Yeah, they're really neat backgrounds, even if they're a little weird. Yeah, it's a little weird to play this without getting, you know, the dance of the sugar plum fairy. Oh, dag nabbit. Ah, 
Ah, oh, dang it. Oh, fuck. Tetris. Oh wait, oh hang on. There's just a monkey. What? Is that King Kong or something? Sure. <laughs> All right, fine, I'll put my name in. Maybe someday somebody will come over and try to beat my high scores, who knows? It could happen. All right, there we go, 60 lines. Sure. Yeah, so you know, I, you can see these are the built-in games, they're fine. Um, the Genesis Mini 2 console does come with Super Street Fighter 2, the new Challengers, which just has, you know, four extra characters. Um, I thought Kid Chameleon was a fun game when I was a kid. Gunstar Heroes is great. So. Yeah, definitely some great games built in. And then Arrow the Acrobat got re-released recently. I paid six bucks, I got the PS5 version. Yeah, so like obviously some of these great games you can just throw on there yourself if you decide to hack your console. But there are risks involved. You can potentially brick your system. I had an instance where I couldn't get it to properly load, but I was able to back up to a a save file um when you use project lunar to hack it it'll create a backup of the original operating system and everything and you can restore from there yeah and cool spot was a fun game when i was a kid so yeah so now let's just talk about the hacking a little bit and you can hit this button if you want to see a side view So what's great about the Genesis Mini is that if you decide to hack it, first off you have two options. You have HackChi or you have Project Lunar. I would say Project Lunar is better if you just want to add extra Genesis games to run on the built-in emulator, but it doesn't have folder support. And as you add more games to the main screen, it slows it down. So once you get up to 80 or 90 games, it might get a little glitchy. So I would say, let's say there's, you know, 20 or 30 additional Genesis games, you want to run them off the built-in emulator, Project Lunar is a good option for that. HackChi is better if you want to do additional consoles and have folder support. The console has two USB ports in the front, so I have a flash drive plugged in right now with a bunch of extra games on it. It's like Sega CD games will run on here, they're just huge. So you're gonna have to put those on an external. Um, I got this to run a whole bunch of the CPS2 arcade games. Street Fighter Alpha 2, Alpha 3, runs them fine. You get, you know, you get RetroArch on here. And I got Knuckles Chaotix on here. Oof, that game's terrible, but I might cover it at some point, we'll see. And I couldn't get any Neo Geo games to work. I always have issues getting those games to work because of the BIOS files. So the Genesis mini console, when you hack it, um, you are able to just transfer ROMs directly to the internal drive, which is great. So, again, if you just want to add extra Genesis games, you don't even need an external uh, hard drive or anything like that. And with the USB ports in front, you know, it comes with the two controllers, but there's additional controllers you can get. I think I even got an Xbox One controller to work on it at one point. So, in contrast, the NES Mini Console that launched for $60 with 30 games built in. Came with one controller with a very short cord on it. Um, and when you hack it, you have to use HackChi, but then you can just load everything onto the internal drive. The controller ports are the same as the Wii remotes. So yes, you can use uh, like the Wii Classic controller, like what I have, 
but you can't plug in like USB controllers. And then you have to get like a splitter if you want to use like an external drive, right? Although that system, if you could find that one for $60, go for it. It's great. Then you've got the PlayStation Classic. That one's a little different because it does have two USB ports in front so you can support additional controllers. You can plug in a USB drive. But to hack that one, you have to have a USB drive or, or a flash drive. And what happens is all the hack files go on there and that has to be plugged in for the hack to work. Otherwise, you just get the default 20 games. That sold originally for $100 with 20 games, not worth it. It didn't even have the best games from the system, although I was able to get it on sale for 30. So that one, I mean, could be worth getting at a discount if you just want to hack it, but it, that one's not worth getting for the built-in games. But then again, there's also just no way to just copy the games onto the internal drive, right? Everything has to be done through the USB drive, which is kind of annoying, but also it means that if you don't want to use a hack, it's easy to just, you just don't plug the drive in, right? And then I've also got the Neo Geo Arcade Stick Pro over here, and that's the same kind of deal. You have to have the USB drive plugged in, you can't transfer stuff to the internal drive. And that one has what's called Hilo Stick. And the people who did the hack, they chose a bunch of games and emulators to put on there for you. You know, which I guess was nice of them, but there's no way for you to just pick and choose what you want to go on there. It doesn't have like an easy to use program like HackChi where you can just easily put games on, take games off. Um, the process to add or remove games is possible. It's just really complicated because you have to go into these spreadsheets and um, text files and add entries. And there's a folder for the art. There's another folder for the ROMs. It's kind of a pain. So Genesis Mini Console, not only is it the best value with what you just get out of the box and built in, but it's actually the easiest one to hack. It has the most options for hacking. So really it's the best of the mini consoles as far as I'm concerned. But again, at $80, it's an awesome value. At $150 or $200, not so much. And the Genesis Mini 2 console has more games, but it has some that aren't very good. It comes with a six button controller, but only one and it hasn't been hacked yet. So if you're planning on hacking a mini console, you're not gonna want the Genesis Mini 2. Plus, as of right now, you'd have to pay at least $110, $120 to get it imported from Japan through Amazon and they charge you $20 shipping on that. So just a great console all around, good construction, good quality. You have the original Sonic 1 and Sonic 2 ROMs which were not included in the um, Origins collection. That has updated ROMs that some people aren't happy about. And I forgot the stage select code, but... So this is one instance where there's just slightly noticeable input lag and the jump sound effect plays a little late. This is something others have pointed out and it is noticeable, but this is still one of the, like, the best games ever made. It, it is running at 60 frames per second. You know? It's great. So part of the reason I wanted to just film the television instead of using the capture card was just so you can see what I see when I'm playing, you know? So I was recently playing... Sonic CD on the Origins collection and just realizing once again that I didn't, don't care for it that much. So Sonic 1 was a very unique game when it came out because it's part platformer, it's part pinball, you know, there's some puzzles, you can fall in pits and there's lava and it just was a really neat game, very unique for its time, very colorful. But one of the biggest improvements in the Origins collection was they were able to actually boost the frame rate in all the special stages in all those games. Because this is not 60, this is maybe 30 or 40 right now, I think. You can see just a noticeably lower frame rate, but also, you know, better graphics. So it was really pushing the system as much as it could.
So, Sonic 2, just a classic game. Yeah, so Sonic CD and Sonic 2 were developed at the same time by different people in charge. And you can see how Sonic CD chose to focus more so on the pinball and puzzle solving aspects of the game. You know, with the time travel mechanics, you see the sign and then you have to like be able to run a certain distance. So there, it's, it's all just a big puzzle. You've just got to find the right spots to do the whole time travel thing to go to the future or the past. And the true object of that game is to go to the past, destroy the machines to save the future, which was a pain in the ass, let me tell you. And I found that game just to be very annoying and not very fun. Then you play Sonic 2 and it's like, oh, this just focuses on being just a fun platformer and it introduces co-op. So if you have like a younger sibling, you know, they can play as Tails and he has infinite lives. So, you know, but he can also hurt the bosses. So it's, it's really, really helpful. Yeah. The only thing is that I don't know if they fixed it in Origins, but in the original game, when you had Sonic and Tails, you needed more rings to clear the special stages, which was very difficult. If you play your cards right, though, and you don't fail the special stages, you can get most of the emeralds right in the first two levels. Although Origins lets you just keep continuing as many times as you want, as long as you have the tokens. But this is just a very fun, colorful game, and this is just how it looks in 16x9 widescreen format. It stretches it out, but it's fine, you know? So before I go, I just want to load up a few other Genesis games. So I, you can see I put Golden Axe 2 and 3 on there myself. Um, and then I found some other games that weren't released in the U.S., like this game King Colossus. This was a, an Asian game that actually didn't come to the States. Um, then you get Green Dog, the Beach Surfer Dude. That's, that's a fun game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then Mickey Mania. See, I would have preferred that over the other two Mickey games, but that's fine. Oh, no. Mick and Mac as the Global Gladiators. What? NES had an awesome game called MC Kids. It was a McDonald's game, right? And it was a neat little platformer similar to Mario. Genesis gets Mick and Mac as Global Gladiators. But just listen to that soundtrack. So you collect the M's, and then at the end of the level, you've got Ronald McDonald helping you clear the stage. So what, what had happened was, when my mom got me the Genesis, I got the Genesis 2 console that had Sonic 2 packed in. But the guy at the uh, Funko Land, I think it was, had said, oh yeah, your son, he'll love Altered Beast. It's like, no. So after I told my mom, oh, I don't like Altered Beast, it scares me. She took me back to the store. We explained everything to the guy and he let us exchange that for this game instead. I saw this game and I'm like, ooh, McDonald's, ooh. Yeah. So, if you fall in the, yeah, you fall in that little uh, slime pit, you just die, so. Yeah. And he takes damage if he falls too far. And everything's made out of slime, so I don't know. When you play a lot of games from the 90s, there's actually, you know, definitely a message of environmentalism throughout, especially in Sonic 2, Final Fantasy 7, you know. All right, I got more health and I got a checkpoint. I beat this game once. I might have used Game Genie though, because <laughs> this game's hard. A lot of games from that time are hard. Yeah, sometimes he just says ouch, and other times he makes that weird noise and gets stunlocked for a second.
I mean, this music is awesome. Yeah, see, sometimes you get stun locked on one of those collapsible bridges and you just plummet to your doom. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, there were a bunch of uh, McDonald's games. It's like, you make the kids obese, you give them diabetes, but hey, you give them a fun game to play when they're too fat to move, right? <laughs> gotta get more arches, exactly. They, then you gotta go back and collect more of those little things. If you reach the end without these M's, you make Ronald McDonald cry. Yeah, this game is freaking hard. You can't just beat the level. Nope. How many of these do I need? Like 30, 100, 50, who knows? Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, it's fine. Yeah, and I got Rift Star up and running on here. Yeah, Rock Knight Adventures. Oh, Sagaya is actually Darius, I think. And yeah, there's some duplicates on here. So then, this is how I was able to get um, the original ROM hack that puts Knuckles in Sonic 1. I'm glad that there's an official version that allows that. Yeah. So originally, if you wanted to be Knuckles in Sonic 1, you had to download a special ROM hack. And he can't jump as high as Sonic still, but he can fly. And you can clearly see parts of levels that were never intended for Knuckles. So in some levels, he can just get up really high and just fly to the end. Actually, the same thing happens if you get the Tails in Sonic 1 hack. You get up really high and you just fly down there. Yeah. So I'm just really glad that Sonic Origins, you know, allows you to play as all the characters in all the games now. Yeah, I'm not even going to do that, but there you go. That's, originally, that's how we played as Knuckles in Sonic 1. And then, this is how I put Knuckles in Sonic 2. Same thing. The difference here, though, is that they actually, like, designed and tested this properly. So Knuckles can't just skip half the level. The only thing is that because he can't jump as high as Sonic, it's a lot harder to kill the final boss. So. So just some fun hacking stuff you can do on here. Yeah, Splatterhouse 2 is on the newer mini console, so is Streets of Rage 3, so is Bang of Run. And look, and then Toy the Genesis version of Toy Story, this is a classic game. I played that a lot as a kid. And then I Virtual Bart, that's one of the many bad Simpsons games. Um, but believe it or not, you could play Ultimate MK3 on Genesis. Mortal Kombat is an instance where the Super Nintendo definitely handled it better. But it's still pretty damn good as far as um, arcade ports go. Yep. So this is when they brought back Katana and Melina because Vanilla's Mortal Kombat 3 was just god awful. Ultimate adds in some of the hidden characters and some additional characters on top of that. Initially, Robot Ninja Smoke was a hidden character. Yeah, see, now, it automatically mapped correctly, though, to the six-button controller. Yeah, except I'm terrible at this game. <laughs> Yeah. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, hang on. I remember how to do stuff. Yeah. It's fine. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I'm, re I'm remembering how to play Scorpion. How about that? He hasn't changed much over the years. Of course, can I remember his freaking fatality? No, of course not. <laughs> there you go. Wonder Boy 3. The first Genesis X-Men game was awful. And playing on an emulator is tough because there's a level where you're supposed to press reset on the console to get it to proceed. It's really weird. Um, but then X-Men 2 Clone Wars is just a great game. Definitely worth playing. So. Let's see. So I covered X-Men vs. Street Fighter during my Arcade August event, but let me just load up um, this one real quick. Hopefully it works. Yeah, okay. It likes it. The only thing is when I load the arcade ROMs, mode becomes the coin button. Yeah, look at this. Oh, man. So yes, you can now get all of these games as part of a new collection, which I do intend to buy. So this is the arcade version. I've also played the Saturn version. It's, it's the same. Saturn was like the console that could really handle direct arcade ports. All right, he doesn't have the red fireball on this one. Got it. He has his teleport. Good. And this one, his Raging Demon might be a level 3, actually. Okay. Ah, you son of a bitch. I hate Dalsum. So, yeah. Okay. Raging Demon is a level three in this one. And then Dan gets a new move where he <laughs> signs an autograph and throws it at him. Look, see? <laughs> Frickin' Dan. Yeah, that tiny little fireball does so much damage. So then here, now I'm in the retro arc menu. So... You sometimes have to na navigate through this when you're using other consoles. I have to hit start and select to go, you know, into the RetroArch menu to get back to here. But yeah, it can run CPS2 titles just fine. Not CPS3, though, I don't think. I got some Game Gear on here. I did get Hopful Mail to work, so I'd like to cover that later this month. Shining Force CD is fine. Um... So I could put a lot more stuff on here if I wanted to. I did get it to run a couple of PlayStation games, I think. And um, I wouldn't bother with N64 emulation because you'd still need a controller that can actually have, you know, control sticks on it and all that. Um, so I don't think most of these mini consoles, I don't think they run N64 games very well anyways, even if you have an adequate controller for it. And without hacking the console, you can play Probotector, which is the, you know, European version of Contra. And everybody's a robot. This is the Japanese version where you have three hit points per life and infinite continues. I've never beaten the English version of this game, but the Japanese version is much easier. You'll beat it eventually. Yeah, I have no idea what you're saying. Sorry, buddy. Now, if you played Contra Operation Galuga, that was a lot of fun, and I believe they're going to do a sequel that will incorporate content from Contra Hardcore and the uh, Contra 3 The Alien Wars. 
and you can unlock Sheena, Brownie, and Brad Fang as uh, hidden. Uh, yeah, they're unlockable characters when you get enough currency. They're expensive, though. Yeah, Sheena's the best, though. I mean, seriously. Why would you play anybody else? She's amazing. And this game, you know, lets you slide and stuff, but you don't do any damage when you slide. It's not like, you know, Gunstar Heroes. Yeah. So under normal circumstances, I can beat this first level without dying. Of course, in this version of the game, I got three hit points. So, this is a great game. I had this as a kid. I could never beat it, though. I think it was at the KB Toys Bargain Bin. I think I got it for only 10 or 20 bucks at the time. Because nobody liked this game at the time, I remember. Or maybe just because it was old and they had new systems coming in at that point. I don't know. I didn't get the Genesis until, like, 94, I think, or 93. And then I got the Saturn, like, after a lot of stores stopped selling games for it. So one day, you know, you'd go into Walmart and they just had, like, 30 copies of Sonic R. And nothing else. Yeah. And then I got Arrow the Acrobat because that was um, also on sale the day my mom brought me to Ames. So I remember her telling me, like... You know, like, I, I was looking at these $60 games, and she's like, oh, well, how about Arrow the Acrobat? That looks fun, right? That one's on sale. That's only $20. How about you get that one, huh? And, no, and I love that game, so it's fine. Yeah, this game rocks. If you play the Japanese version. <laughs> Great game, but I do not recommend the North American ROM. I also have the Contra Collection on PS4, which has like every version of all those games. And the Japanese version of Contra 1 is very difficult, but it has some like interesting visual effects and cutscenes and stuff. So yeah, of course I can't read Japanese, and I always forget which one takes me to the laboratory. That's the only thing, just look it up ahead of time, make sure you pick the right level. Yeah, I have no idea what they're saying, but that's fine. Yeah, this game rocks. There we go. Yeah, and, and so you get alternate artwork for all these games. Some cases it's better. Like this looks really cool. Um, the Sonic art is kind of bland. Right, we're. I guess I took Puyo Puyo off. Or well, let me look for. It. Yeah, and then I added some other Japanese ROMs too, though. Um, oh yeah, this is Puyo Puyo. So when you switch to the other language, Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine just becomes this. Yeah. Oh yeah, who doesn't like Puyo Puyo, man? It's awesome. Sonic Mania has a boss fight that's just Puyo Puyo. Because I'm not even good at these games either, though. I'm not good at, like, lining up combos, that's all. So, there you go. Yeah, so I, I added um, this game, Magical Talu Luto, Talu Luto Adventure. <laughs> and then look, but then you got Vampire Killer. This is Castlevania Bloodlines. But I believe the Japanese version is a little bit easier. Yeah, because uh, Konami fucked with the difficulty levels. So, yeah, so, 
But once again, this, it's worth it just for the built-in games. But then it just gets even better when you hack it. So if you have the Sega Classics collection on Steam, there is Steam Workshop support. You could check that out if you're looking for some additional games to play. That's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah. Oh, this game rocks. Yeah. Oh, except they've mapped the buttons weird. See, I always want C to be jump and B to be attack. And I think it's because on the NES controller it was just two buttons and it was just, you know, A was jump, B was shoot or whatever. So, there you go. I've covered that game pretty extensively in past videos, but... I mean, to me, like, if I had to give this console a score, it's easily a 10 out of 10. If you can get it for $80. And it's an 11 out of 10 if you decide to hack it and add more games to it. So there you have it. Yeah, and this has Thunder Force 3. I think this one's pretty good. I played a bunch of the Thunder Force games. I want to say the first one was pretty lousy because it's like a top-down shooter and you just die a lot. Whereas this is a more traditional, yeah, side-scroller. Horizontal scrolling, shoot him up. I died already. <laughs> These games are too fucking hard. De dead again, see? These games require memorization more so than anything else. But look at that nice scrolling background. That Genesis, you know, had decent graphics. They did what they could with the hardware. Now, Sega does have some additional um, mini consoles modeled after their arcade machines, and those play a bunch of like vertical scrolling and side-scrolling shoot-'em-ups. So definitely check that out. But look, game over already. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I suck. I suck. Yeah, Vector Man was a big deal when it came out. I mean, I don't like Super Fantasy Zone that much, to be honest. And, you know, Shining Force 2 is probably better than 1. But you get Landstalker and Beyond Oasis, those are the same developers. You get Echo the Dolphin, which is just a weird-ass game. So let me see if I can get this to work. But, you know, Sega promoted the hell out of this game, I think. But again, this is one of those weird kind of experimental games that you don't really get anymore, except from the indie space. So one day, I was messing around, and I did this. So if you just type the letter A over and over again, it brings you here. So I don't know. I stumbled on that completely by accident because I didn't know any passwords and I was just like, well, screw it. I'll just type in all A's. Yeah. So Echo the Dolphin, weird ass game. All right. So thanks for tuning in, if you did. Um, so as far as I can tell, let's see a Dragoon. There's something screwy with that. I'm sure it's fixable though. So I did have one instance where the system would turn on, but there was nothing on the screen, there was no sound, and I had been using Hackchi. So in order to fix it, I had to connect it to the computer, go into Hackchi, uninstall it, then install Project Lunar instead, which has a utility built in to restore from a backup. And that's how I got it back into the factory state, and then I hacked it again and hadn't had an issue since. So if you do screw something up, it is possible to fix it. So don't, you know, don't have a heart attack before you go online and look it up. All right. Thanks for tuning in. 
This has been the Genesis Mini Review. Great console. I approve. See you later.